Hey folks, welcome back to Manor Lords. I almost said Ostrov. Been doing that for months. <laughs> Gotta break a lot of old habits now. What were we doing last? Impossible. And I turned up their voices a little bit. I've got to find the right volume for that. They have some really humorous little comments that they just kind of blurred out while they're working. But I notice as soon as I swing the camera, it instantly stops them. So I have to be careful about that. Now they're not going to say a word while I'm... Especially the Barkers over here. Yeah, we'll see. We'll try that volume level for now, see how that works out. Anyway, I was saying we were working on housing last time. Um, we're going to continue building. We've got three timber left, and meaning we've got nobody in the logging camp right now because I've got them all building. Two of them are left because we've got somebody, somebody in the granary? Granary? We don't, no. So you're not in there. You are in food. We've got somebody in berries. We've got somebody in and wild animals and we have somebody in firewood because we've got 19 months of well we don't really have 19 months of fuel now we have almost no houses which haven't been stocked up yet so it's not calculating anything but we yeah so we've got three families that are busy at the moment we'll be shifting them all around until new families show up we just finished building this one so we got two in here let's get the we got 30 left and we want to get vegetables going. That's 15 silver coins, I'm told. So we'll do that. We have 15 silver coins left. And with that, we've got to get our first trade route open and start selling something. So that's how close we're taking this. But these guys now, it's something I didn't really explain well last time. To put what, I, this is what I've been told. And I'm trusting that comment that when you've got a burgage plot set up nice and long I say you want a great big vegetable garden and so you set up a massive lot to get lots of vegetables back in there when they go to harvest it they will walk out and harvest one bush and bring back one vegetable well probably more like one bushel basket of a vegetable or something like that then they'll go and make another long trip and they'll harvest another one and bring it all the way back so if you set up your vegetable gardens long and shallow in this direction then they have shorter trips to make they're still going to make as many trips but they have half as much the distance to travel that's the logic that i'm using by building something like this lots of garden two families to split the labor in half so they can spend only half the time that they would have been gardening the other half they can be back doing whatever job they're doing and they have half the distance to walk to get it so that's my take on a basically a farm a, a family-based farm is what i'm thinking of that that's kind of like what we're going to build in here and in regard to a real farm plot i'm calling this a vegetable farm plot run by two houses so that's my my rationale there now what else came up in the comments there was a comment about harvesting those crops let's go into here the orchards say they will harvest around september the vegetables don't say when they will harvest and like i said in the practice practice game that i played i was watching them harvest vegetables in the snow and harvest it in the spring and, and they weren't planting they were actually taking out bushes so I don't know that there is a set harvest time for vegetable backyards, whereas the farms, they will supposedly harvest by that schedule, but even that's not set in stone. Where whenever you happen to start that, that field and, and man the farm, they will head out there and start, uh, um, start putting the crops in and, and plowing, even if it's, you know, one month before snow hits. So they... It's, it's not a, a hard set rule for them. It's, it's more like a suggestion. Anyway, we've got a couple of other services we have yet to get in to really make this first tier, this first level uh, of housing work before we get into tier two. We do need to get the church in. We need to get um, some other supplies in. And here's something. Okay, this will prove me wrong here. When we get into level two, these are going to be very important. And something that I didn't realize at first when I was playing for myself. That as some of these, it isn't just two things of food. There will be, like in clothing, there will be one thing of clothing that is either linen, leather, or yarn. And another thing of clothing that is something else entirely. It's not linen, 
and leather to give you a two. It's two different categories. Food, I thought, would follow the same pattern. One type, but it, it's just food. Okay. But other, as we get deeper in, these little ticks here will have different definitions underneath them. So it's not as obvious as it looks. All right. <clears throat> in order to fulfill that one tick of clothing, we need to get linen or leather or yarn. Leather is the easiest. It's out of our our uh, animal fields over here, our, 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 uh, our hunting grounds, which comes through the hunter, which needs to go through a tanner who will make leather. Or we get sheep going, and, we, and they will pull the sheep off, head, take it into a... Oh, what is their official title? Industry, right? No, farming. Okay, we'll go back to industry. The... Malt, tannery, weaver, that's the word I couldn't think of. And lots are happening over here. Ah, so each time we get a house going, of course, somebody moves in. And apparently we've satisfied all five now. Good. Um, but their family member that's been waiting for them to get the houses done will join them. So it seems like originally when I first saw this game, it, it was it was a demo that had come out and I missed it. So all I could do is watch other series. It was only out for a few days and it was done. And I think that there were fewer people that had come out to set up. And then once the setup was done, the rest of their family would come in and join them. That's kind of what we saw here. There were two per, and now there's three per. So every house has now got three people. And they are all off doing different things. Uh, I like the way that it shows you where the people are at the moment. So constructing, constructing. So these are among our two fam our families of two over here that are builders. So they are, and you can grab these like banished and pin them, pin, and leave them there. Remember banished? Any of you who used to follow me back then? I used to have a wall of boxes. You can resize them. A wall over here, and I would work out of the center, and I'd have my, my busy work space all around with all of my notes of what buildings are being worked on. Do you just see this part right here? And we grab that one, and... You know, pop that right there, and okay, I'm working on these these burgage plots right now, and then as it would finish, they would change color, and I click on them and know what's going on. And I just saw the word Gandalf there. Yeah, I I, I realized I was talking to the half wit Brit today, and it dawned on me I spelled that wrong. <laughs> Gandalf has an A in it. Can I just do that? Ooh, it's a smart one. A lot of these games, you click here wherever you want, it just goes back to the end. Okay, Gandalf. I do remember that now. I'm pronouncing it Gandalf in the movie, and I thought, that sounds weird. I thought it was Gandalf. Okay, anyway, I digress, and, and I will digress a lot. I, I love rabbit trails. Um, we need a tannery going. We need trading going. Gandalf. Settlement level. So we have satisfied five of five burgage plots. Oh, okay. There's two in here. So that satisfied the number of houses, five houses. But it didn't satisfy five plots. It took one more over here to get the fifth plot. Okay, so that's the difference. Because we already saw the tents gone, and I thought we were done. Okay. New message, by the way. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you will now be able to create your first... Mil militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, you will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Let's form the militia. And we've got a... the tell us right there? New development point. There it is. Okay. So that, I believe, pauses us. And now we can finally talk about this and have something to see. First tier, first level... We could go into a farming or agricultural base. So we've got the heavy plow, which enables oxen at the farmhouse to significantly faster plow large fields. But it also allows you to bring crops back with your ox that's hauling this. I've heard that the ox, well, the team will bring back, you know, the person and his ox bring back 30 
of the of the um, the foods from the field, whichever one it happens to be. Whereas otherwise, the farmers will go out and bring back one at a time and take a long time to bring in the harvest. We could go into sheep breeding, which confuses me. Uh, sheep grazing on pastures slowly multiply. It's like they don't know how to multiply unless you click this button. I think they kind of have that figured out, but we'll, we'll go with it anyway. Uh, apparently, it facilitates better multiplication, but the sheep will not breed until you take this tr this this uh, policy here or this uh, development point. They will stay as the number that you bought through the trader. Uh, orchardry is not available to you until you have researched it, and that will allow you to put them into homes, backyards, uh, burgage plots, backyards. So, and then from there, you branch out into bakeries. We do have a communal oven that will let us bake breads, but this will uh, allow artisans to do it instead of a, a town building doing it. So instead of a family taking it, taking over and running a farm, a, a town building, this will put it within the somebody's home, and um, twice as efficient as a communal oven. There it is. So that's the reason you might want to take that fertilization new upgrade fence up allows us to follow. Okay, to use the animals. Yeah, fallow field as a pasture which rapidly restores lost fertility. Okay, so we can, we can put the sheep in there, or maybe eventually cattle or whatever else gets added to the game. I would imagine over time this is going to fill out more or even go further up and have multiple more layers of it. Oh, there we go. There's more layers there. Oh, I can move this. Uh, I can scroll in. Wow. Okay. Um, fertilization, or if we go the orchard pathway, we've got irrigation. Dramatically lowers the amount of damage caused by droughts. All right, or we can get into rye, which is not available right now, as well as rye processed into flour. So similar to wheat, um, but when we had clicked on the fertilities, ember, there was some. Rye is a much, much bigger uh, span. Rye apparently is far more hardy. It can, it can handle different kinds of, of soils. Or we go into our natural resources. So we can go into trapping. So it will give us a passive stream of meat. Now, I did this with my practice game, and I never saw any more meat come in. Back, it was, I was at zero constantly. I know, it's possible that it was coming in, going right to the market, and immediately being picked up by a, uh, a citizen, and I never witnessed it. But I was at zero meat for the longest time, even though I had this trait. So I'm kind of leery about this one now. But from there, you can get into advanced skinning, which doubles the meat harvested by hunters. So they're, they're more efficient, and they, they waste less meat as they skin it. Or you can get into pelt extraction. So it lets you... Uh, uh, collect hides from those traps as well um, or just like the sheep it's a it's a one-off thing it doesn't branch we can double our berries on the map or we can get into beekeeping and honey which then branches into uh, candle making and gives us a commodity to sell I don't know if the citizens use it at this time at least but it is something to sell or we head into the mining branch, which we might do here because we do have that deep iron mine. Um, gives us the ability to turn our homes, our artisans, into blacksmiths and create helmets and mail armor and plate armor. Which I think we can use on our own um, retinue, which we will get when we get our manor up and running. We'll get our own private army that's different from the town folks militia. Or, and th that one branches into advanced armor making, so chain mail. And, uh, burgage plots. That, okay, so this is level 3 stuff, so burgage plot level 3 gets into these, versus level 2. Ah, uh, okay. Or we head into charcoal burning, which allows us to turn our firewood into twice the capacity, or two charcoals per one firewood. Which is helpful. Firewood, after a while, gets kind of hard to maintain. Um, let me scroll. There we go. Which then can go into deep mining. Turn that iron mine into an indefinite rich deposit. And work in progress. Or we head over here, which is somewhere that I want to go uh, with certainty. And that is trading. Trading, we're going to depend on for a while. We don't have the ability to bring in barley to make malt to make beer for our tavern, but we can trade it in if we can cut down the maximum cost 
of opening up a new trade route to no more than 25. It can go up well into the hundreds to get a, a lucrative trade route going. So this caps it off there, and one step further, we can get rid of the, what are, what are they calling it? The tariff? Yeah, the tariff of imports. So right now it automatically adds 10. You sell it for 2, but you've got to pay 12 to bring it in. This gets rid of that extra 10, and it's the same price in and out. So if we can nail both of these, we can be bringing in barley, for two, we can be bringing in uh, flax for two and get our linens going without ever having to uh, to plant them. So these are these are huge. If your province is going to center on trade, this one is kind of odd. It is a way of bringing in stuff, so you don't have to worry about making firewood and making bread. It will constantly bring it in, but it charges you. So you're not going to pay that 10, I'm pretty sure is what it means. You're, it's like taking this one, but it's only specifically for firewood and bread. So as a citizen needs firewood or needs something to eat, they go to this, this uh, market stall that you're going to place in your market area, and they're going to grab a piece of bread, and you're going to see two tick off of your town's uh, uh, treasury. So it's a quick easy way but it's expensive and the only time I can think of using that is if you are well out into the map and they're so far away from a and we are still building good I was hoping we were paused doing that I could have I could have gone through a whole month there um, where they're so far away from a marketplace that they're never going to get what they need and you've got these houses out here and you're doing something in this corner because you really did want to grab that 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 emmer over here for some reason and you just decided that's I, i'm going to do it anyway well you could put a firewood stand and a bread stand and keep them in basic needs so they can do their stuff without spending all their time walking so there is a use for it but it's not very uh not very common to me or not not it's not worth it to me um so what do we want we do have a lot of animals we do have quite a few berries. We have enough for now. I think I might go right into the trading. I usually start with food, and then I go into trading. But I think this time, for this playthrough, I'm going to pause here because I don't think we're building anything more. Um, I'm going to go into the trading aspect of it and clear out this one. So, though I wish I had the trade up and running so you could see what happens if you don't. If I wait on that one... Then what else? Sheep is pretty important. I like that one. We're not going to be a farming community here. We're just going to be doing the one farm. It's the next province that's going to get farming. So we'll we'll go this route for that one. But sheep is pretty important right from the beginning. Because you not only get wool. But you can turn that wool into the uh, into gambesons. They're kind of the cloth armor for our troops. So I think I'm going to go there. We're fine on food. Honey doesn't seem to bring in enough unless, well, i got to see it a little bit further along. Um, the half-wet Brit just set up Honey in his series, so I will be watching his to see how that goes, to see if I ever want to put it in mine. I haven't done it myself. But this one is powerful, this chain right here, for your home province, so that you can trade in and out. And then use some of these other ones for your second and third province to barter back in and then trade it back out and just keep a chain going through your economy. So with all that long-winded discussion, we are now working on wool. Then we'll do trade next. That way I can get the trader up and running and you can see how that worked if I hadn't picked that. Because I want you to see the prices beyond the 25 max because it gets pretty intense. Um... We want a tannery. I need to get that built. And I don't think we're building anything else now. These are all done, and they were the last of them. So I'm going to pause it until I get another building project going and get everything balanced around. We're already in May, and we want to get some things done here. Where are we at here, though? I'm curious. Um, Approval. There you are. So we just switched over to May, apparently. So we don't have... I can't move my mouse, can I? I click now so recent 30 days is nothing 
and there won't be any more negatives going into there because now we do have enough. There's no more homelessness. So now we're going to start building positives to tick away from that homelessness. And positives will also involve having food variety, which... Is this abandoned? No, it's not. Who's running that thing? Um, the hunter, maybe? I don't know. Who is running that thing? Hunter. One of the two. Maybe the forager. Hunter, there you are. Uh, nope, no stall there. And you are here. There you are. So the foraging hut is running a booth. And we saw that the firewood stand, or woodcutter's lodge, is running a booth. So these guys are running those. So we need to get a tanner in because he will run a clothing or fabric or material kind of a of a, of a of a market stall. So that would be under industry and tannery. Tannery, you would think you'd want to build it over here next to the hunting camp. That's what I originally thought because not enough goods. We need logs. Okay, so hold that thought while I get this going again. We need you running. We're not building anything. So let's put both of those families right in there and make that happen. Okay, we'll let this run for a moment. Um, now, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work the way that I would have assumed. I thought that the tanners could just walk over, grab the hides, walk back over, and do what they need. I want to say Farthest Frontier allows that. And Ostrov might too. They might do that. But this one, I'm pretty sure, makes you go all the way to the storehouse to drop off the hides. If I had a family in there, they would actually be doing that. And that is a problem. We're going to have to keep this guy maintained at least once in a while to go and gather everything in until we get more families available. Unassigned families for construction work. Oh, there's a well waiting to be done. That's what was next. Nice that you can click on these too. Which Burgish plot just finished? Click on it. And there's something else that I need to show everyone that I brought, came up in the comments last episode that I, I, I knew about, but I forgot all about it. Tab. Tab is huge. Tab gives you a lot of information. It gives you this overlay. Shows you where your oxes are. They're just kind of sitting out here waiting because we aren't doing anything at the moment. Shows you how many people are working in a business. Shows you there's water there. Um, how many people are living in the houses. This plot has one family. Later, this one has two. When this becomes a tier three, this will have four. Um, they are needing... Looks like a cross, so they're needing a church. And that looks like armor. So apparently they are needing armor, but they do have their... No, they don't. I haven't formed it yet. Boom. Yeah. They will keep their spears and shields, which we have 20 of each, in their homes once they are assigned. And the first militia unit you would typically use is a spear militia because you've got 20 of each in town. So let's just click that. There's only, well, 10 of us, 5... Five families and, and two guys out of each is typical. So we've got 10 of our 36 already there, which means all these homes are now going to suddenly fill up with the um, uh, with the spears and the shields, and they're going to start stocking them, which is why I thought I say all that, because it said it was, where was I? I was in tab. Missing what looks like chain mail, or I, I assume that means armor, but it's also missing the... Um, the, the shields and missing the spears, so you're missing food. Okay, I don't know what the exclamation point is. Um, I don't see anything on this screen. The, oh, no, I was going to say it's saying that we haven't chosen. There's an exclamation point, but no, this one has been chosen, so that's not it. And it doesn't pop up to tell me. So, and there's one. What is the one? Hmm. So there's more information here than I know the answer for. <laughs> so there's a lot of information when you hit tab. Um, yeah. So that will fill out a lot more, get a lot more complex as we get further into the game too, which makes it even more powerful of a tool to hit this and sit here and just kind of study who's lacking, who isn't, you know, where are my voids, where are my surpluses. So it's it's a good tool to use and what was I doing that caused me to want to bring that up I have no idea but the tanner cannot 
to my knowledge, it, uh, that's the conclusion I came to when I was testing the game. It, he does not grab directly out of the hunting. He grabs out of the, the storehouse. And so that won't happen. He'll sit here and not do anything until we stock the storehouse with a family to go and get all those hides. Then he can go and grab the hides. So it's a one-way trip. These guys stock. They don't deliver. So the tannery will go and grab it from here, but they won't. Yeah, these guys over here, let me word it differently. These guys will not deliver their excess to storage. The storehouse family has to go and get it. It's an input, not an output, or not a both. So it gives you a sense of if you get to a point where nothing seems to be working, you have to realize that half of your equation has, it has a zero in it. Then you'll start to, to put the pieces together. So, with all of that, and I want into here and into the tannery. So, his source of goods is actually going to be closer to the storehouse. Going to be to the closest, the storehouse that is closest to these guys. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. Will there ever be another storehouse right over here? That's possible. In which case, he won't be grabbing from here anymore. He'll be grabbing from over here. So, and I'm still needing logs. Okay, we'll let that run. Um, I was questioning last time whether or not to put houses in this strip right through here. At least right through here. This is going to be uh, burgage plots that are artisan-based and smaller. Right through here. And I assume that's the barrier right there. In fact, does that still fit? Did I mess myself up here? Um, you, you, grab, and say to there, and there, and rotate. And I can still get, yeah, I still have enough room for a backyard, which essentially means any of these. There's your backyard, which gives us the artisans that I need in here for the idea of a business base downtown. So I did leave enough room. So do I want to carry that around and into here was the question. I think in here would be a good place for things like the malt house and the tanner and um, the bloomery and things that are the support businesses. The industry, I guess, would be the way of saying it to support the artisans that are actually making the finished products out of the base products that we're building, the the, the linens and the, the 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 leathers, the dyes, the malt, and the furnace where we have here, the smithy and the bloomery for the blacksmith that's going to be sitting in this house right here to make the armor. So I think our this level could be in here and look pretty good. So, we need the tanner. We still need one more log, right? One more log. Okay. So, we have been running real slow. We hired, sent two into here, but they are actually just getting here. If we click on people, on any business, we can see where they are and what they're doing. Um, you guys are probably just heading to work now, as I've been sitting there talking. You are transporting spears oh, okay okay i set up the our militia and they all stopped their jobs everywhere to go to here to get the spears and shields and to take them back home and drop them off we're all transporting okay and the oxen are over here in order to get the logs out of the forest they're then going to have to eventually this is going to say guiding an ox and they're going to grab their ox and go into the forest grab the logs and drive them back out Okay, so that now I know what's going on. And where am I at? I've got to make sure not to let this one run long. Last episode ended really strange. I and it was a good episode. It it did what I needed it to do. It explained all of the core mechanics of the game for the most part, and I didn't want to redo it because it worked, but those last 15 minutes just started stuttering real bad and I don't know why the same video here on my own computer ran fine but once it got uploaded to YouTube it went a little a little bonkers there at the end but it was still well viewable 
so I went ahead and let it through. I think it has something to do with how long the, the video is, how big the file is. That's my guess. Because I can't think of anything else that's going on in my own system that would have caused it. So I want to make sure to keep these episodes no longer than an hour and make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, so King's Road, out in here. I'm thinking about the trader right now while I'm waiting for another log to show up. And I could speed up the game, but I could also spend this time doing a little more explaining and talking and planning. And that's, that's what I tend to do. The idea of, okay, we're waiting for logs, so let's go to speed three for a long time and wait for those logs to come in and then continue. Well, while you were waiting for that, you could have been doing a dozen other things, and not as much time would have gone by. And two years from now of, of saving that time, you're actually ready for that raid to come in. So th speed three is, is the... Uh, is the uh, kryptonite to a game like this it really is the trader where are you you are a trader over here we have a trading post which also takes four logs um traveling merchants i'm gonna actually read this i've never read it before i have only just seen it and then just assumed but there's more to it than i have assumed trading with the visiting travel merchants traveling merchants can we see one they do tend to just kind of wander around they're really interesting um, what is that? That sure looks like an animal. It does. I don't know what that is. Can I zoom backwards? Kind of. That is a deer? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, trading. Am I running? I'm running. Normally, these guys are just kind of around. So, I'm surprised that I'm... If you roll your mouse takes off really quick no they're not on the road I really thought that I'd be able to pop in and see a trader real quick they're like a traveling merchant they've got they've got all the gear on them that they need they've got their frying pan hanging off their belt they've got a backpack and a walking stick and there is not a single one of them out here maybe they don't trigger until your trading post is in and then suddenly they magically appear I am shocked, but I'm also exploring a really beautiful world. Look at this river over here. Wow. Yeah, I've got some... You know, what would that be? Just some kind of a of a plant. I was going to say it's, it's like a water plant, but no, we're not on the river down here. And yeah, I, I could spend hours just, just moving around this map, looking at the wildflowers and all the bushes. and It is quite the game anyway do we have our fourth log yet we do not where are these people doing <laughs> okay we're getting back to work now we're felling a tree we're debranching a tree show me that one there we are yeah clearing that out and we're going to i know we debranch it i don't know if we also log it and i guess if once you click on them you can just follow them around you're dropping a tree let's watch you for a moment Dropping another tree. There it goes. Timber! Mm. Now, that reminds me, the, all these branches here. These are deciduous trees. This is a deciduous forest. If you get further where, and I was really shocked when I saw this. North officially is here. But no. There are conifer forests. Not you. And it kind of, there we go. As you get into this area, you're into pines and firs. And what, what is that, actually? Let me get in there. That that might be a spruce. Yeah, there's no, they don't have the long needles. It's either a spruce or... If they turn yellow in the fall, then these are tamaracks. But I'm thinking that's spruce. Those are not pine needles. Though fir, I think, has a... a no, those, that looks... Well, it looks like cedar, too. Anyway, that is not the kind of trees that we've got. These would make a great forest, and there's very little delimbing or you know branching to do when you when you cut down these deciduous trees. It takes a lot to turn it into a into a log. You ever play Farming Simulator and grab the chainsaw and went in and cut down an oak tree? You're cutting for a half an hour trying to clean that thing up into a, a base log, as compared to a a pine tree where you just walk along and zip it and all the branches go away. But I am mixing my games. These guys are making logs, and we are at five timber now. Okay, we can get going again. And yes, this is my play style. 
<laughs> and yes, we're not going to get a lot done for the first few episodes, but we're going to have a lot of fun doing nothing. All right, construction and industry and tannery. Tannery's going to go over here somewhere. Somewhere. So, tannery stinks in real life. Housing, closest houses are probably right here. We could get into here or here. I think we would be fine, you know, thematically. Oh, listening to somebody over here. Um, let's see. Do I kick you off a little bit? Let's undo. Snap turns itself back on every time you turn the game on, so be aware of that. You'll always be turning it off if you... I want to go a little deeper in. Get you off the road. You're hidden a little bit. Yeah, let's do something like that. And rotate the road right into there. And do that. And let's take the road, which is R. Which drove me nuts when I first started the game. Because I would get in here and I'd hit R to start rotating. And it would give me a road. So, roads are R. And I think I'm going to tap into that same spot. Yeah, let's see here. Not like, nah, yeah, not quite so so extreme. And it looks like it's right about there. That yeah, looks pretty good. Kind of a fork in the road. You got choices to make. Now I hope they put up signposts one of these days and add that to the uh, the dec decorations. But anyway, um, yes, R is road, H is house, C is construction, V is army. I don't quite get that one. Everything else makes sense. Um, so tannery, you are important. There aren't really any other projects being worked on. Did that well already get done? It did not. Oh, because we have no families doing the building. Okay. It's going to yell at me here in a moment. Alright. So we have not done any planting yet. Alright. That's fine. And I'm just I'm noticing things as I'm going. The well right there. So we need to choose a family. I don't want to touch you guys. Food, we are doing really well. 13 food, but there's only 5 families to feed. If we get 20 families, that's the equivalent of maybe 2 months worth of food. But at the moment, we're doing really well. So just realize that's proportional. And you see the winds coming in? To you know, change the subject again, the environment will let you know when things are about to change. And it's about to change quite violently. Now, it's the game gives you a break the first year and doesn't send in a thunderstorm. At least I've never seen one the first year. But you will get a lot of rainstorms. Second year, you see this, you start to worry because something's about to light on fire. <laughs> but um, food is not that critical at the moment. Though berries are seasonal. And though it's, it's staying about as fast as we can pick them. Two families would clean it out, but one will maintain all year long. Animals will be there. Where's animals? Yeah, 35 of 40. We could shut these guys down, except... And we're about there storage-wise, too. What is that? For, we've got 10 pelts over here. The hides. Okay. Let's shut you guys down. Though that, And it does not take out a stall. Okay. It was the, forest, or the uh, foragers that had the stall cord. Good. So that still gives us a food stall, which now has 5 meat, 6 bread, and 6 berries. And we still have our firewood stall. And there's six firewood sitting in there. Good. Um, but that gives us a free family. So meat, we're doing okay. We do need to get a family into here, though, to start bringing all that stuff over. So there is that. Um, but I do need as many logs in as possible. Um, we still we have six excess timber now, even though we just committed four of them. Good. So let's get the trader placed. And we'll get back to that conversation. Trading's over here. We have a trading post. Um, regional health is the currency used for the trade, meaning this money over here as compared to the treasury for the entire the kingdom, we will say. All of your provinces combined. Your lord's money, your noble's money, which he uses to spend for war, for Things that involve multiple provinces at the same time, like setting up the new town over here. This town, their treasury, doesn't have to pay for this province to get its starter camp of 250 gold. You do. So you need to be able to work on global issues, whereas these guys are only working on 
their local issues with their monies. So this is this province's trader using their money and giving them money from their trader to help you really solidify how that works. And one issue that tends... Whoa, I am wrong. Okay, I got me a thunderstorm. Interesting. I played two rounds and I didn't get a thunderstorm that first year either time. And it seems like most of the series that I've seen, it was always the next year. Lightning, let's see if I can pull out and see it right there. You pull out a little bit and you get a little more view of the place. It, it gets really interesting out there. Lightning is well drawn. If I could pause at the right moment, I'd be able to... to you'd see all the veins of that, that, that electric bolt firing through. Okay, so if we work over here talking about the trader, maybe we'll see it actually hit something. But the trader has one issue. You do have to be connected to a King's Road. Now, that should work as we can put it right here, and this does connect to a King's Road eventually. Except not all the King's Roads are connected. So if I put it here, we would get a warning. This isn't actually connected. You know, the trader is not connected. And you scratch your head and say, what do you mean? But it isn't. So that's probably one of the little issues that comes up. And I've seen it before, but I wasn't actually playing. I just saw someone else do it and couldn't figure out why. Because it sure looked like it was connected. Now we're connected. Or, to make sure of it, you just put it on this road over here instead. And then you're definitely connected. But I'm going to do something more like so. I like the look of that. We do have seven logs now. And this isn't too far away for them to go in and grab from the the granary or grab from storage and bring it over here that's not too bad um what did we we're out of our fertility zone okay we're good there so i think this is a, a place for it we're gonna go right there and still only one family working so only three logs left so it does get tight here at the beginning but what else was in there? One employed, one family member travels to nearest possible destinations to conduct trade. Oh, I wondered about that. While other family members help manage the inventory. If needed, assigned families will automatically set up stalls on the marketplace to sell imported goods. I didn't know that either. Maybe if you have multiple families working in there, one of those families will start setting up stalls. I have seen them leave. And it'll allow you to place a horse into the trader. And they would just leave. And I didn't realize that was really benefiting me. Because, like, wait a minute. Now there's one less person to go start dragging this stuff over and fill up the trader. Because all of these trading carts are going to start rolling in to us. So I didn't realize there was any value in going away ourselves. Just let it all come to us. But now that I see that it's you know we're one-third responsible for our own trades then it makes sense to get a couple of different people in that trader, a couple of different families, and a couple of different horses, so they can make those long trips a lot quicker. Interesting. Um, the well's finished. Okay. I guess we weren't working on this yet. Okay. So we'll probably see that you are in. Okay, you are here. So this is where we're going to have to really start juggling things. We don't have meat running anymore. We do have berries running. We have two families running this one. I think I'll kick that down to one. And I need to get the... Actually, let's, let's prove something. You Let's put a family in the tannery. And let's verify that they don't actually walk, transporting, all the way out to here where the hides are sitting right now. Uh, here and bring them in and start tanning them. I'm pretty sure they need to get it from here. But let's find out if I'm wrong. Uh, you guys, officially you're transporting what? Hides. Okay, I'm wrong. Scratch about half this video. <laughs> they, and you're transporting firewood. So they must use firewood as well. Or are you transporting firewood for your own home? That's possible too. Where do you guys live? You live over here. So she came from here. She's working on their home. She's going to get some firewood, come back. Because we don't have a way across. So she's got to go the long way around. Roads do help. They do. 
and something else to notice these burgage plots here Ostrov drove me nuts in one regard you had one entrance manor lords thought ahead and they put a back gate on all of the plots that is so nice they can leave this way if their jobs over here they don't have to go around the block to get there so we could benefit here by giving them some more roads or we cannot squeeze through there unfortunately i did mess that one up we could shoot across let's do that and verify that we still can we can it worked here and that's still as much room okay so we could put a road there she can now make a much faster trip into the firewood though did i see that wrong let's go back to the tannery i assume she was going to get firewood from there but actually firewood is right there and that's her so she must have gone over here to the marketplace and then gone home. Okay. She didn't go over here to get it from the source. Alrighty. Um, we have this little tiny marketplace over here. I'm going to put another little tiny marketplace somewhere else. And then probably another one in the middle. And then probably one, you know, somewhere out in here. And another one out over here. And one out over there. Rather than a big central marketplace. That's my plan. We'll see if I'm right. But that's what... To me, that feels like it's a lot more efficient. Okay, so you guys are running. You are grabbing the the goods. One more time, you are on your way in. Yep, you're going to follow the roads. And they actually do, for the most part, follow the roads. So, it's not so much a suggestion in this game. They actually, they actually make use of this thing that you spent so much time and effort making look and function really, really well. And boy, that looks good. Oh, this game is beautiful. Yeah, they've got the uh, the carcass hanging up there, stripping it. Where are the hides stored? They're over here. Oh, there's the meats. Are their hides visible? There are not. Are they in the tent? Oh, they got some bedding in the tent. Curious. That's that's a bucket of blood. Yeah. Uh huh. Fire. But there. Oh, there's the hides. Right over there. Drying on the fence. Cool. Anyway, yeah. This this game is... This... Yeah. <laughs> the first two years of my channel, I worked with the game called Banished. This, I have a feeling, is the new Banished. It really do. Banished was a... Oh, a... Uh, how would you call it? A benchmark? A, a An industry standard. It was the baseline that everything else had to reach for quite a few years it was the game the you know colony builder of, of its type i have a feeling manor lords has redefined the uh, the genre this is what everything will be based on now for quite some time and i could see me doing more than one series here maybe two or three in this one i do have lots of other games i want to do and i may not run them one after the other but i can see coming back to manor lords often there's just so much here, and there's so much more potential. This game's going to grow for quite some time, so it's it's going to be quite the uh, quite the game. Now we've got that in. We're already dragging logs over here. Great. Uh, we've drug all of them over here, and apparently they have sunk into the ground, and they are gone. Yeah, they kind of vanished. Mm-hmm. Not hiding in the trees there. Now they yeah they. They're, they're buried right now. <laughs> just just ignore that. Um, we can get these guys upgraded. I don't know if we're staying here. But we'll build. It'll build a little little uh, stall. And two animals will be able to live in there. This looks like a great place for it. It does. But it's also a crossroad. And will I want that crossroad to branch out and go somewhere else? I don't know. Um, another important building besides the tannery and the trader is the saw pit. That's kind of one of the last ones you've got to get done for your, your level one. Not that one. Pull out of that. Your level one uh, tier, first tier housing uh, system. So let's get into probably gathering, right? Yeah, saw pit. Saw pit will draw directly from here. And as we just saw, tanning will also draw from here. Which tells me I need to get a shortcut in here for them. 
that would be important. And something else that I didn't think of here. I was watching uh, uh, Semidium, and he had done that, and I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. He put roads from his logging camp out into the woods, and they then drug the, the trees back on those roads. Rather than working the way either all the way around, grabbing a road over here, and then coming back in, or I've even seen them go all the way out here when we move this, this uh, cutting area to like right here, all the way out to the King's Road, all the way back through town, all the way through here to go into there because they do really like the roads. So it does make sense to throw in some logging roads. We do that in, in real life anyway, in the real world. We do that just to, actually we're not going into there. That's where the food is. All of our logging is going to be this direction. So let's start here. We do need to, these guys to get a, a better, easier way in to grab their their hides. And let's just kind of, oh, let's, why am I bending like that? Where's my, I want to smooth that out a little bit there there and curve in like they've been walking this thing and they just yeah that, that looks good so a little bit faster trip for you guys and i wanted to get into here so many things that i see that rabbit trail me because look at that look at the animations you got your what i've learned from clan folk you ever play clan folk they've got a a wash that is made of bark they've got a wash that is made of ash and that does different things to the hides and, and gets them prepared. I can, see, I can see these being, you know, three different types of wash. They work from one, then they work from another, then they roll it out. And we've actually got leather sitting here. Two leather, ready to go. And somebody's right there. They're going to set up a, a market stand and build it. She, we should, she should be over here building it. No, she's not. Is this person over here? Let's look at the people. Waiting, constructing. Lawrence is walking over here to construct. Now, do that again. Lawrence, there we are. You're walking over here. You're going to build your market stand. And then you're going to walk back and get the supplies. You're going to be the... Oh, what is the the term? Peddler. You're going to be the peddler for your family. And yet yeah, you did go to the wrong side. Okay, here we go. Are you gonna build it the right direction? Fresh meat. Get your fresh meat here. She's facing outward. He's facing outward. You are sometimes they'll build it so they're right into each other, even on top of each other. But you did build it so you're facing outward? I think you are. Yeah, we'll find out. Anyway, there's our three market stalls, three main categories food, firewood, and clothing at this point. And we'll do another three of them and another three of them. But I am running on that, that time limit. I'm getting there. And, of course, I'll never feel like I got enough done each episode. But there's so much to explain at the beginning of the game to, to so that you aren't scratching your head and wondering, why is he doing that? He never talked about that. So I want I, I assume that I'm talking to people who have not played the game before. So that's, that's my goal, to set up a... a quality tutorial so that at least the most important concepts of the game are well explained then you can go from here and jump into the game yourself and just have a ball and not sit there scratching your head trying to figure out what this means um so you are here you need a family we can trade for 48 we can set up a trade route for roof tiles and then we can pay 18 each for each tile or each we'll say case or flat of tiles or we take that first perk and it drops all these down to a maximum of 25. So 6 and 7 and, and, and 25. We've got all these different categories and all the things that are in it. Uh, so flax. We need this for linen. We can't grow it. But if we were to take the second perk in that tier, which cut off the 10 for the import price, it would cost us two to buy it and it would give us two to sell it. It would even us out so that we can then start bringing flax in at just two, keep a, a total a surplus in the town of, say, 10. Every time we get below that, a trader would roll in and give us another whatever to, to top off 10. And then our, right there, our storehouse family will come grab the 10, drop it off, our 
uh, weaver would then go to the storehouse, grab that, and start turning it into a linen, drop it off. The storehouse would go and grab it, take it back here, and then a stall would grab it and start selling the linen. That's kind of the, the flow of the chain right there. And then you've satisfied another tick of your of your clothing, linen, leather, or yarn. So there's the logic behind it all. Um, so timber, we never got to timber. We were talking about getting more logging roads in. Okay, let's do that real quick, then we get to the, the saw pit, then we'll call this one done. So you guys are going to be cleaning out all of this. So let's just give you a pathway that that looks normal rather than just a quick temporary road. Let's go ahead and assume this one's going to be here a while. We're not going to be near the the uh, the animals. Let's pull back one and kind of curve off like this and like that. Okay. Wherever they are in this forest, they're going to jump on that and they're going to fast track it right on in and back to there. As we get into this part of the forest, either we will move this guy over there or we'll just track around the berries and kind of wander a path through all this and wherever they're at they'll grab it and go right back in so that works out well so logs do end up here though the upgraded storage i believe will take logs too so that is a a possible thing i first saw that on Semidium's uh series he was surprised as well he popped in there and there was a pile of logs in there so that's that's nice because these guys get up to 28 and they're done they just sit there and they don't do anything anymore even though you've, you're stocked with families and you don't realize it too because the last thing that you think of is okay how, how full is my logging camp because you're busy just building the town and suddenly you realize they've been sitting there for the last two months not doing anything um, 54%. I just noticed we're in June and I didn't see a new family had arrived. It did not. But we finally market food variety plus seven. So that's enough to start overcoming our negative four homelessness. Pretty soon we're going to have uh, clothing variety or availability plus two or plus four. And pretty soon we're going to see this increasing more and more so we have our, our logging road in we want to put in the gathering the saw pit somewhere near here because as i have spent a lot of time trying to explain this is where the logs are going to be so somewhere in this area where to exactly all of these are bushes they're not trees there are occasionally little trees that have been left behind that i think were too young to take down and so they are kind of the next round of growth and we do have a forester that we can put in to add to these and densify this but there are no trees to take out right here there is one right there does it say it doesn't say so it's not counting that as a tree yet so i guess what counts as a tree is one that is right there trees uprooted is one that's actually capable of being cut down at this time so these are future trees, but they're not officially a tree yet. Interesting. So you do kind of got to be careful where you're going to place your things. But I think this might go well right in here somewhere. They're going to deliver from here to the right side there. The or little orange lines are going to drop off a log right there. So the shortest distance that the ox can travel, I'm sure, is the best. Let's do something like that. Just there. And it's possible because... the. We're seeing, you know, roads going in and out of this, but the ox can go anywhere he wants. So let's let's connect this with an actual road. Hmm, doesn't show it yet. I'm pretty sure it's over here. Let's let it build and just verify that that it's this side, not that side. But once it builds, we'll connect all the dots in here and make this work a little better. But I think I am at a stopping point here. We've got our timber that's going to be coming our our saw pit so planks that are going to be coming in right now we've got zero planks we've got trading to get into next time it's in place we've got hide starting to come in or leather starting to come in which is satisfying more and more of our needs all we have left is a church so church looks like this guy but we need planks before we can build it oh we are what do we arrive with planks that is planks, right? That sure looks like firewood. That's planks. See that symbol right there? How come it's not a red... Oh, look at that. It's red 20 over here. 
but is not following through with it over here. I was thinking, oh, wow, we do have all that we need. But no, over here, we, we have a big angry red 20 right next to the planks. Okay, so once the planks come in, then we can set the church, figure out where that's going to go. And then after that, we will, where am I, administrative? We will figure out where the manor goes and set that somewhere, which starts off with this little building, but there's a whole bunch to add to it later. So with that, am I done? At least done for now. And no, these episodes will never feel long enough, and I'll always feel like I've only just started by the time it's ready to end. But I think we've got a, oh, a, a pretty good base going on here as far as our first level town. All the, the essentials are pretty much done, or at least talked about. Next time we'll actually get the man. We should be able to get the manor and the church in next time and get to trade and get our first trade route going. So with that, I'm going to call this one done. Thanks for watching, folks, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye now.